Hey guys, Willem from Rabbit Snake Whiskey here. I have here a Cape Cobra that was found in a workshop. I was called about the snake earlier, but unfortunately I was out of the area. So I referred the call to someone else and they went and collected the snake. He was, uh, he was stuck under a car in a workshop and he is covered in motor oil, unfortunately. As you'll see just now, he's barely moving at all, but he is still alive. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean him off properly. And I do that by washing him with sunlight liquid, which gets away off quite nicely. And once I've gotten him cleaned off, I'm just going to give him loads of water, watch him for a day or two, make sure he's okay. And then I will be releasing him. Okay. Shame this poor guy. It's a Cape Cobra, a beautiful yellow one, but you can see in between his scales there all the oil, you can see on his belly all the oil. Uh, so that obviously don't ever do what I'm doing here. This is very dangerous unless you know how to do this uh, kind of work safely. Um, but I'm just trying to uncoil him here. Yo, I can even just feel it on my hands. It's, it's, uh, it's oil all over. And it's got quite a strong smell as well. You can see he's barely moving, not even the tail is twitching or anything. He is still alive. I have seen him move in the bucket. You can see there he's trying to hold onto the side of the of the bucket here. So I have seen him moving. I'm just going to soak him in the soapy water a little bit. And then just splash some water on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and wipe him off with, uh, with sunlight liquid again, just to get all of this off. Okay, he's waking up a little bit now. I'm gonna try and wipe him down. It's quite tricky to do when you've gotta do it alone. And uh, usually this gets the majority of the oil off and whatever else is still there, he'll lose when he sheds, but hopefully at least feels a little bit better. Um, sometimes if they breathe in the oil or they swallow the oil, that does make them quite lethargic as well. Okay, now he's getting some life. So now I can feel him moving. And he's uh, trying to get out of my grip here, but I've got him. So you should be able to see on the video there as well. He's moving around a lot now. Okay, so I'm glad to see that the oil is coming off quite nicely. So I'm gonna do the top, and then afterwards I'll do the bottom. I'm leaving the body down on the ground so, it's, uh, so he's not hanging by his neck where I'm holding him at the moment. Shame this oil is all the way in under his under his belly scales as well. Okay, now this is the tricky part. So I'm not putting my fingers anywhere near near his mouth or anything and I've got a solid grip. Just want to get the oil and stuff off of there. Off of the face. Okay, it's coming off nicely. I can see it clearing up. Obviously this isn't the perfect clean, but like I said, um, if I can at least get the worst off, he'll uh, he'll be able to lose the rest naturally. Okay, so bottom part's going to be very tricky. Um, I just want to show you this. This is the worst part. Look at that. Shame. Sometimes this wasn't on purpose. This was by accident. He was in the workshop and he somehow got into oil that was lying on the ground or something. Sometimes they, uh, sometimes people pour oil onto snakes when they see them though, thinking that'll, that'll make the snake go away, which is quite cruel to do that. Um, they pour oil on them. I've seen people pour coolant fluid on them. I've seen people pour diesel on them. It's, uh, none of it's very nice at all. It just ends up making them sick. See, these scales are actually coming off. All these ones where the oil got in, luckily they're coming off. So I'm just gently, the loose ones, taking them off because I'm taking a lot of oil with them as well as I take them off. You know, and I can actually see, <laughs> I can see with my finger the layer of oil under each of these scales as I take them off. It's quite bad. I can literally wipe off a, like a layer of grime. So, Cape Cobras are venomous. Um, they're one of the most venomous snakes in South Africa. They have a um, they have a neurotoxic venom, which means it affects your nervous system. Uh, specifically with Cape Cobra venom, similar to Black Mamba venom, 
the main effect is that you become paralyzed. Um, so if someone gets bitten by a snake like this, initial symptoms are a tingling on the lips, then you get droopy eyed, um, you get slurred speech, you feel disoriented, and you, in effect, it's progressive weakness. And so as it spreads, you get weaker and weaker, and you become more and more paralyzed. You can't, later on, you can't move at all, and that's where the danger lies. It's not the venom that kills you. It's the fact that you're paralyzed, and then you can't breathe. So uh, it's not a snake to mess with, but there are no snakes that will actively chase you or try and attack you or anything like that in South Africa. If you, uh, if you just give any snakes you see space, they will leave you alone. They'll go the other way and they'll go and hide most of the time. Or if they don't go and hide, they'll just uh, stay exactly where they are. They won't chase you, they won't attack you. Um, so sometimes when I get a call out, what I'll do is I'll tell people to just uh, keep watching the snake if it's outside in the garden, for example, from a safe distance of five meters, because at five meters you, uh, you're, there's no snake in the country that can do anything to you. Not even a spitting snake can reach you at that distance. Um, else if it's inside and they're worried it goes into the rest of the house, I, I'll sometimes tell them to just uh, close off the door and the windows and the room where it is and maybe put a towel in front of the door on the outside so it can't get out under the door and then just close off the room and I can go and find it when I get there. Um, or what they can do is uh, throw a towel over it. If you throw a towel over a snake like this, oftentimes it'll think it's hiding and it will stay right there until the snake catcher gets there to go and uh, to go and relocate it. And this isn't hurting them at all, what I'm doing here. All of his skin is loose, like, it would have fallen off in a couple of days anyway. Um, I'm just helping the process along a bit, which hopefully means it helps him along a bit. But there's nothing that will actively repel snakes and keep them away from your house. So it doesn't help if you pour chemicals or things in the garden around the house to try and keep the snakes away. That doesn't work at all. There's also no plant that will keep them away. There's no gadget. It doesn't stop unscrupulous people from still trying to sell these kinds of mixtures and concoctions and gadgets and things to you. But it does absolutely nothing. It just uh, just thins your wallet. Um, best thing you can do to keep snakes off of your property is to make sure that you've got no uh, you've got no food, water, or shelter for them. So in other words, no building or garden refuse lying around, uh, no mice nests, no open water features that will attract prey items and so on. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of scales and a lot of oil that came off. Uh, the water is even dirty now. But let's put him in his bucket. He's got some water there, and then I'll come and check on him in, uh, in a day or so.